Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. This is part one of the Rolex Air King 2012 model part and assembly design. So if you haven't checked out the last series we did on generative shape design, we designed the DA50RG aircraft, so kindly check that one out. But if you want to learn or improve your skills on part design as well as assembly design, this is the series for you. So we're designing this model as I, I am showing here, I've designed this assembly model. And just to go over a few parts that we're going to be creating, we have the case which consists of a monoblock middle case and a scroll down back case here. And then this model has protective horns, which are protecting the winding crown, which are also going to design. And then we have this um, distinctive black display dial with legible chroma light display. And then there is this sapphire crystal at the top, we're going to be designing this movement hand, that is the hour hand, the minute hand, as well as the second hand. Then for the band, we have an oyster bracelet. Now in real life, the oyster band width would be tapered from a 20 millimeter to a 16 millimeter at the clasp. But in this case, we're just going to maintain a constant width of the oyster bracelet. And it connects to this foldable clasp so the oyster bracelet consists of a three-piece solid links, as you can see here. This is a three-piece solid link. And then it also has an easy link five millimeter comfort extension link. So let me show you the open clasp. Uh, first, uh, this is what it looks like at the back when it is completely closed. Okay, we have the Rolex logo right there. This is what the model looks like when the foldable clasp is open. So as I was mentioning, we have this easy link five millimeter comfort extension link here. And then the clasp consists of a beacon hook lift lock system. So if it closes right here, uses this hook. And it also has this safety cover or the safety clasp which also has this Rolex logo. So we're going to learn how to create all of these parts uh, as well as creating these indented logos. And I hope you're going to learn a lot. So let's just dive right into it. We're going to start by creating this middle case, this monoblock. So open cut here, go to start mechanical design, select part design, and we're going to name this part the middle case. Then I'm going to hide all the planes and insert an access system. When I'm working with assembly design, I prefer to use access system. So in case I need to use access to access transfer, that would be easier than translating. Now our first sketch is going to be on the XY plane. So sketch XY plane. And the first thing we're going to create are three concentric circles. Go to profile, select circle. Just three concentric circles from the origin, like so, escape. And then we're going to constrain them. So this is the inner side of the clock, which is going to be 34 millimeters. This is the diameter of the clock, which is going to be 40 millimeters. And this is defining where the end links are ending, which is going to be 52. So the overall length of the watch. Skip. Then the next thing we're going to create is a line. Select line. A vertical line from the outer circle to this middle one and then constrain the distance between that and the vertical axis to be 10 millimeters then select an arc using two limits and select from this outer circle to this inner circle just create a simple arc 
define the radius to be 35 and then the distance between this point and this vertical axis to be 12 and make it tangent with this circle. All right, now we can trim off using quick trim, we can trim off the extra circle. And now select these three new elements and we want to mirror them. So first let's create an axis. We're going to create a, a vertical axis and another horizontal axis. And now we can reselect those three new elements mirror this one using the vertical axis then again select now all six of them and mirror them using the horizontal axis that's the profile we can now trim off the extra curve here because there's a monoblock and we don't want to have intersecting geometry so just click where you want to trim easy peasy now the next thing we're going to create is a protective horn so select profile and we're going to select uh, to create a profile that looks like this a vertical line a horizontal line i don't want all this extra uh, I just need a horizontal line up and another vertical line escape this line is 3.15 millimeter in length this line is 2.5 millimeters and then the distance between this point and this vertical line is four millimeters all right now let's make this line and this to be tangent all right now we can create another arc connecting these two Select the same arc using two point limit. Select circle and the end of this line. Create a simple arc that is tangent with that uh, circle. Then define its radius to be 13. If your tangency doesn't come automatically, it's okay. Just create the arc and then define the tangency later. Now that we have that, we can select our new elements, four elements, and mirror those using this horizontal axis. And then select quick trim and trim off this circle at this point and at that point. And our profile is complete, so exit the workbench. We're going to create a pad. Originally, we are going to make it 8.8. .8, and the reason we are making it 8.8 .8 is because we're going to trim off some area. We need this end horns to be longer than uh, the middle part. Let's change this color here to about gray so I can see the other curves that I'm creating. And I'll sketch this ZY plane. So as I was saying, we need to create, um, we need to groove off some material here. So I'm going to create a line from this vertical axis, just a straight line like so. And the distance is going to be 22. And then the distance between this line 
and this horizontal axis is 2. That's what we are eating away. And I'm just going to finish it off using a spline, so a curve that I'm creating using a spline. We can extend it, no problem. It can be like so. You can always come back and experiment. So we don't want it to eat everything away. Exit the workbench. And select Groove. This is our sketch. And the axis is the Z axis. 360 degrees. Preview. And select OK. So as I said, we can adjust later is depending on how much material we want uh, it to remain here. So I'm going to uh, push it a little bit out, outwards, go back to the sketch. And all you have to do is um, extend this a little bit. Make the curve to be how you want it to be. This is freestyle. Exit. So we have this. I think I'm going to uh, once again push it a little bit more. Like so. Yeah, I like that one. And now we can just uh, select these edges. These four edges and insert dress up features, add fillet, edge fillet, sorry. Five is a bit too large. Let's try two millimeters. Okay. So now our bottom side looks like that. I think that's good enough. Now for these horns, we can add fillets. Let's preview this. Select OK. Hold on. Uh, maybe try 1.8. Preview. We can leave it as that. If you want this one to be completely circular, then you would have made this longer and you can just create a sketch here, a circular and groove it off with that. But uh, I'm going to leave it as that. Next, we are also going to add filler to these edges. These four edges right here. Make sure you're selecting the upper side and that the horns are on your right side. Insert dress up features. This is going to be large, of course. We want it to drop down. We can start with five. And select OK. So that looks good. Then this end corners, select them.
once again add other edge fillet and let's try to let's try 0.5 that's much better okay okay any other part so what we're going to do we are going to pocket a one millimeter where the case back is going to screw in so you can either you can select this face and sketch and just add So the inner one was 34 so this one can be 36 select ok and exit then add a pocket which is one millimeter preview and select ok There it is. So it's going to be threaded in normal case, but we're not going to make uh, physical threads. We're just going to leave it as it is. So this is our middle case. Uh, it's looking good. The only thing now we need to add is where we are going to add the, to, to wind up the crown. So initially select this face. Let us hide that axis system. Select this face. Sketch. Create a circle. Make sure the center is aligning with the vertical axis. And constrain the diameter. And... The diameter is going to be 1.8 and make sure that the center is equidistant with these two edges so equidistant point and select ok then exit the workbench create a pocket up to surface the limit being here select ok and then once again select this face sketch create another circle which is concentric it's going to be concentric with this other circle so select this inner circle and make them concentric and the diameter of this is going to be 3 then select this circle and this one and just project 3d element exit create a pad which is going to be 2.5 select ok now we could leave it like that but we are learning here so i want to teach you how to create a thread and in this case you can either create a circular thread or you can create um, a square thread there are so many threads that you can create so how do we do that so there are two ways to do that and one is where you go to insert dress up features and select thread tab and you can select this as the lateral face 
this is the limiting phase you can change here to maybe support depth and define the diameter as well as the pitch and then preview but uh, this is going to be invisible thread but what if we wanted to create a physical thread that we can see here an outer thread where we're going to wind up the crown in this case we can start by creating some wireframe from gsd so go to generative shape design select this curve and enter a point using circle or sphere as the center using circle sphere center and then select ok so this is the point and then insert an axis system using this point as the center or as the origin select ok now we need to create a profile where the helix is going to run so select the zx plane and sketch let me rotate this so the profile is coming from inward going up to the surface and then going uh, all the way to the end so from here upward like so so i can start by creating a line horizontal and then define the distance between this line and the vertical to be 1.5 to coincide with the other cylinder And then there is an you can either use a spline or you can use an arc starting from here and then almost to the end tangent like so and then the distance between here this point and this line we're going to be to define it as 0.3 so that it is uh, right in the middle of this distance here Then this line can be about 1.5. And once again, it's going to go down on the other side as well. We can move it a little bit closer say up to that point in fact I'm going to define the distance between the vertical axis and this point to be 0.3 which is going to be the diameter of the thread because I don't want it to extrude outwards 0.3 let's see And then this distance here maybe reduce it to 1.2. Okay, that looks fine by me. You can always edit later. So exit the workbench. And now we can create a plane. Then use parallel through point and the reference is the ZX plane. Then sketch this plane and create the profile of the thread. So in this case, as I said, we are using a circular thread. So just select circle. And then we want... Let me zoom in. We want the center of this circle and the end of this point the end of this point and the center to be coincident and then the diameter is going to be 0.3 exit the workbench we can hide this plane now and create the helix pitch and revolution is the type the pitch is 0.4 or 0.3 now let's use 0.4 and then the revolutions this we can determine later the starting point is this vertex 
and the axis is this x-axis reverse the direction so now you can add sorry you can add some more revolutions to so that it goes up to the very end and then the profile is going to be that profile that we created preview so you can see this helix doesn't have constant diameter but in, in, instead it uh, adapts to this curve that we created which is what we want and now we can go to mechanical design and define this part body in work object and select rib our profile is this circle and the center curve is the helix preview select ok you can hide this sketch now uh, as well as this point and this axis so this is what we are left with as you can see it starts off at this point and it winds up so you can bring it closer if you want by changing the distance of the sketch not this one uh, the distance of this sketch we had 0 0.3 And you can change it to, let's say, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is extruding. Let's leave it the way it was. 0.3. Okay. So that's, that's, that's good. And that's basically it for the middle case. This is the middle block. In the next episode, we're going to create the dial, uh, the case back. Uh, the crystal and so on and so forth there are of course a few details that we are going to add later on finishing details such as where the lug screws will go in the word rolex inscribed in it or whatever we'll find later on but in the meantime let's end it here and i'll catch you in the next episode